Hi, everyone, and welcome to day seven of my 31 Horror Movies in 31 Days of May series. Um, today, I will be reviewing 1982, the original Poltergeist. So, yeah, Poltergeist is interesting in that it was a very successful, commercially successful movie at the box office. Also was nominated for some Academy Awards. So this is definitely more of a, of a general public kind of horror movie. Um, it's a PG rating, so there's not a lot of blood and, and gore and stuff like that in it. Um, but yeah, very, very well received and and um, very popular, especially during the time that it came out. So The Poltergeist was released in 1982, and it's directed by Toby Hooper and written by Steven Spielberg. So those two kind of collaborated on the movie. Um the movie stars Joe Beth Williams, Craig T. Nelson, Beecher Strait, Heather O'Rourke, and Dominic Dunn. And so, again, spoiler-free review. I'll just kind of go through the setup and the premise of the movie without giving too much away as far as what happens, and then I'll give you my thoughts about it. So Poltergeist, it's in a supernatural horror film from 1982, and it basically focuses on a suburban family whose home is invaded by malevolent ghosts, that end up taking, end up abducting their daughter in essence. And basically the film starts all late one night, Carol Ann played by Heather O'Rourke. Um, she starts talking to the family's television while it's displaying like a snowy screen, a staticky screen. Um, so that's kind of the start of it. And then a bunch of bizarre events start occurring the next day, like silverware beat is bending on its own, chair is stacking on its own that kind of thing. And then eventually on a stormy night, the backyard tree comes alive and Lynn comes through the house and tries to take their young son. They have two daughters, a teenage daughter, and then Carol Ann, the younger daughter, and then a younger son who's a little bit older than Carol Ann. His name is Robbie. Um, so while he's, while they're trying to rescue him, Carol Ann gets, um, she gets sucked through a portal that suddenly appears in the, inside the closet. And they, so they can only hear her voice through the television. They can't, um, they can't see her or anything. So she's she's not really there, only like consciously through the TV. So basically, they they have a, a small group of like a pair of psychologists from the, from UC Irvine come and investigate, and kind of determine what's going on, and they determine that it's a poltergeist and. They also, um, they call in like a spiritual medium person that can talk to the other side, Tangina Barons, uh, played by, um, oh, I can't think of her name now. Um, yeah, I can picture, but I can't think of her actress's name. I don't want to, I don't want to guess. So anyway, that's pretty much the premise of the movie. So it's your, it's your, it's your ultimate haunted house kind of movie, very supernatural uh, you know, there's, like I said, no blood or guts or gore or anything like that. But um, it's a very effective horror movie. I can see why it was so popular for the time and even now. And uh, I give props to movies like Poltergeist and um, Tourist Trap, movies that that are able to scare audiences without being rated R or, or not rated at all. I mean, these are PG movies that are effective, which goes to show you that horror movies can be effective if you have the right story and the right and the good writing um even without all the blood and the, and the swearing and everything so my thoughts on this movie are i think the practical effects are really good especially for the time 1982 it was released so i'm assuming they made it in 1981 i thought the special effects looked pretty good there's some of it's a little bit outdated but not i've seen movies that are more outdated than this one for sure um so yeah, good special effects. The biggest thing I like is the family, though. They they kind of introduce us to the family. We get to know them a little bit. They seem like a real family, you know, sibling squabbles and and fights and things of that nature. You know, the they just don't seem they're not your typical stock family or stock characters like you get in horror movies or movies in general, really, for that matter. Um, Joe Beth Williams and Craig T. Nelson play the parents. The Freelings, and they're very, they're both very good in this movie. Um, very good performances by them. And, we, we, you know, we really care about these characters. We care about Carol Ann. We care about um, Craig T. Nelson's character and Joe Beth Williams' character. 
which is not always the case in horror movies. So that was the biggest, the big takeaway for me. The movie is very visually appealing, obviously. It's got a lot of special effects with like strobe lights and things like that. What they do with it, it looks good. It's a really well written script in terms of dialogue and story. I mean, again, the story is not overly complex. It's a family moves into a house that um, is haunted. It's got some kind of ghost possessing it and it's trying to cause trouble. But but still, it's written very well by Steven Spielberg. And um, it's got a really good score as well. I mean, that doesn't get talked about enough. It was actually nominated, though, for, for original score as an Academy Award back in 1983. Sound effects are really good as well. That's something you don't often talk about in a movie, but in this movie, um, the sound the sound design is really good, and and of course, it's got one of the most quotable lines, not only in horror history and movie history, uttered by Carol Ann when she's staring at the TV with a famous "They're here." <laughs> so, I mean, that's the most iconic line from this movie. Who can forget that? Um, as far as cons go, I don't really have much. My only con, again, is a cliche, kind of a horror cliche of the of the house or the basically like the area, um, the development that they moved into where this house is located again is happens to be built over a, over an old cemetery, like a burial ground. And of course, um, Craig T. Nelson's character's boss talks about, oh, yeah, we moved the gravestones and stuff but of course he doesn't tell them that they didn't move the the coffins underneath the ground as they'll find out later in the movie it's just kind of cliche i mean again it, it doesn't ruin the movie or anything but that's just a that's just a nitpick i have it's you know how many of these haunted houses can be built over ancient burial grounds or uh just a, an old cemetery or something that used to be but Anyway, this is a great movie. I would definitely, I mean, obviously it's been out for um, 40 years. Definitely recommend watching it. Recommend purchasing it. I got this on Blu-ray, so it's got a few special features. Nothing too crazy, but um, yeah, just a really good movie. I mean, my wife can watch this movie. It's not your, it's not just for like horror, um, cult horror fans. It's definitely more of a general audience horror movie. And it's a very good one, very effective, good performances. So I highly recommend it. I would give it an 8 out of 10 for what it is. Again, not not terribly scary, especially in the 21st century here. At the time, I'm sure, much like Jaws, I'm sure it was scarier then. But it's it works well enough, very effective. So, yeah, that's my review on Poltergeist, guys, day 7 of my series of 31 horror movies. So please comment below if you've seen Poltergeist, what you think of it, like and dislike. And please like and subscribe to my video, or my channel, I should say, to see future videos on my upcoming movie reviews and the rest of my 31 horror movie series. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.